Unity started to do something very odd. If I turn it on to the ohms range, it's drifting all over the shop. This is, for me, quite unacceptable. These are, each of them, 46.7k, so they add to. Helena did the calculation for me. Say hello, Helena. Helena got them out to 93.3k, adding them together. And we were going to measure this and go, well, does the math map back to the real world? First thing is, let's just check that this resistor net do does make sense. And then I think we're going to have to tear down the unity and see what's going on. I have replaced the battery. So if I stick that in a 200k range, let's see what we get with these resistors. 93.8 and we said 93.3. Not too far wrong. This thing drifting even with no probes, pretty wrong. If I short the probes, we definitely get zero. Definitely other measurements are working, so if I go to the continuity measurement, so that's not drifting, that's fine. Take the probes off and tear it down. First thing I'm gonna do is take out the battery. And of course, I can almost guarantee that they've hidden a couple of screws under these. Okay, right, let's just pop the battery out. So it takes a single nine volt battery. But I really like the way that, that battery box is made up. That's kind of nice for me. And let's get my nail in there. There we go, there's a screw hidden under there, which means there's a screw hidden under there. Yay. Okay, let's get these back ones open under where these hidden screws were. I've just turned it around to get easier access in there. Get those out. And let's pull that apart. There we go. Now it's just these clips up the top here. So the clips up there. I like this nice double insulating. And there's some kind of shielding at the back there. Some kind of foil thing going off. So there's the backs of those terminals molded through. Not bad. Uh, that's going to be your current shunt. Replaceable fuses. There's your piezo beeper. So let's just have a look in there. That one's obviously going to be holding the central column for this. So I want to unscrew these. The first thing I've noticed before I'm even in there, and this was a brand new meter which I'd not opened, is that all of these screw heads, or many of these screw heads, look pretty worn. The other thing I'm going to notice, this component doesn't look quite right. R85 suggests it's going to be a resistor, and there's this stuff around it. I can't read what's on top of it. What do you think we can do with a resistor we don't know what it is and can't read? How can we find out a bit more information about it? Uh, multimeter. Going to try measuring this in a 20k range. Nothing here, so I'll go up a range. Try something in a 200k range. Nope. 2 meg range? Ah, we have something, Helena. We got around about 881k. Okay, well let's try it on this thing here. Okay, that's that's probably a 1k resistor. These packages, to me, say that these resistors are built for bigger currents. We've got this one out. Helena, try that one there for me, sweetheart. There we go. Am I going to need, and I think I am, to undo these four? Because is that all moulded in? Yeah, that's all moulded into there. But these might be just pull-out inserts, so let's see. Maybe they'll just pop right out of the top and maybe I don't need to unscrew it. Well, I'll leave that screw in there. Let's just have a look. Yeah, that side's going. This side is firmly held down. Okay, so I'm going to have to get those out. Right, I think, Helena, this is one you can screw, so unscrew that then. That's it, it's ready to go. And Okay, and the other three of those. And the last one. Kind of exciting, actually. It's like the slow opening of a present. You know, we're getting into the inside of what's going on here, and we'll figure out what's behind all of that. Because although there are a few bits and bobs on this side of the board, it's going to be way more fun on the other side. Okay, let's have a look. Let's see if we can get inside there then. Oh. And something else holding this on. Ah, here we are. The display comes away with it. Let's hold that carefully so we can see what's going on. Right, okay. So, 
there is oh actually we can get inside that mechanism and see what's going on there ah okay so we've got some big ball bearing joints and this thing here slot that back in because I don't want it to be misaligned I don't think it'll misalign too far but I'll be 90 degrees out which would be kind of awkward because then I'd never be able to set it correctly again or have trouble setting that but okay so the big spring ball bearings you can see the spring in this one if you press on that okay and there's your two button endings so here's your two switches I've got an LDR here which is going to be controlling the uh, the light mode. here sweepers on these rings here those look like great big diodes a couple of chips down here my guess is maybe they're amplifiers or, or, or maybe I don't know ADCs MOVs and clearly all the really interesting stuff is going on under here so let's see if I can get that off okay just enough to see okay it's one of them Right, so that just goes on to there. Okay, so we got some lovely blob chip on board controller. A bit of foam here. That chip on board is obviously going directly to the display. Obviously, these are going to be various input stages. Now that on there, my slightly chunkier trace is coming out of that. There's nothing that stands out as obviously wrong. Which is what's most worrying about this. Yeah. See, there's a few rough spots on this board. I mean, look at that, that's been scratched up. And that soldering's a bit iffy. What's that for? Okay, that's this soldered in... Hmm, soldered in fuse, so not user replaceable, that one. Okay, that one's terrible soldering. Okay, the front side, still pretty shoddy, actually. But that, no, I'm expecting that to have come through and formed a nice little tent on the back there and some of this is a bit iffy. I mean, obviously, this has all been done with solder paste, so these are quite nice, but that I don't like. So these, these four here are going to make up your backlight, so these are going to be LEDs, lights, to light up for the backlight for it. So C9R8, well, that's, so that's a great big, that big tantalum cap right there. So there's nothing obviously wrong with this some soldering that I don't necessarily like the look of um, and this scrape here but that hasn't really stopped it contacting is there any crud somewhere in it that's just kind of shorting some of these connections now maybe we've got volt ohm and common maybe there's something it can't be a short between them because a short between them would leave it at zero there's some drift between them and the problem is if, if there's something wrong with the blobbed chip here then it's beyond repair there's nothing we can do with it I think I'm going to try and put it back together and see if actually taking it apart has actually decrudded something enough for it to work unless there are some user suggestions uh, you can leave comments on the video on what to try next it may be over to buy one oh, there's some crud there let's just take off but that's date that looks like data lines so those look like the lines for the selections. The knack crud was above the solder mask, so again, I don't see that being a problem. It's quite messy here, actually. I can see flux residue everywhere. And what's that part that's been... Okay, that's the switch. So the switches have been added in a bit later, and they're a bit... Yeah. Okay. It's interesting. So they've got a pad here for a surface mount capacitor that they've replaced with a through-hole capacitor. Okay, well, obviously the ball was designed for either, and that, that looks like a protection device. Right, I've reassembled it, moment of truth. Okay, I've stuck it in continuity, let's make sure I've not damaged it. First thing I was worried about was I'd not lined up the LCD. Uh, it looks good, it's still making sense, so... I've not made it worse, now has it stabilised? Might, might yet have been just a bit of crud. Right, let's connect this up, see if I've done everything right, then continuity should be fine. And let's go to the 200k range and measure this. 93.1, 93.2k, 46.7, this one is 46.6, so 93.2. 
two or three, give or take. Yeah. Okay. Maybe it was some crud, or maybe the battery being out has reset it somehow. Anyway, good night. Thank you.